Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And on this October 31st, just want to wish you all a happy Halloween. For those of you that celebrate the Spanish holiday, Dia de los Muertos, happy Day of the Dead. In this lesson, we're going to learn the importance of recycling your pumpkins. And this is an episode that was recorded about a year ago. And I just want to re-remind you the importance of bringing those pumpkins back into your garden instead of tossing them in your waste. So check this lesson out. Enjoy. Today we're going to be talking about the nutritional value of recycling pumpkins back into your garden for maximizing your spring and summer vegetable and fruit harvest as well as your roses and all of your other ornamental, ornamental plants by bringing these back into your garden. I'm going to show you how right now. Follow me. So when you pick up a bag of fertilizer from your local nursery, you're typically looking at three numbers. The first number is nitrogen, the second number is phosphorus, and the third number is potassium. But plants need far more than just three elements to survive. And this here is an article I found from the FloridaGardener.com talking about 16 elements necessary for plants. And there's dozens of articles that explain this. And here's the list, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, boron, chlorine, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. Your macronutrients are the nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, which are the three that you're used to hearing, your NPKs, but they also need calcium and magnesium and sulfur. Those six are your macronutrients necessary for good plant health. Here is a periodic table with 118 elements which make up the periodic table. And you can see from those 16, look at how many elements your plants need. We just listed them. The hydrogen, which is in the air um, and water. Boron, which is in the um, soil or needs to be added. Carbon, which it gets also from the air um, and also the soil. Nitrogen, um, which is also in the air and sometimes could be added to the soil as well. Oxygen, air. Um, as well as water, manganese, which has to be added to the soil, phosphorus needs to be added to the soil, sulfur needs to be added to the soil, chlorine needs to be added to the soil, potassium needs to be added, calcium needs to be added, manganese needs to be added, iron needs to be added, copper needs to be added, zinc needs to be added, and molybdenum. So there's a lot of things plants need, but how cool is it that by doing things organically and recycling, hopefully your kitchen scraps and your leaves and all of your cuttings from your garden, but in addition, Check out the value of recycling pumpkins into your garden as well. So I just picked up this first article I found on the internet that I'm going to share with you. It came from this source over here. It says nutritiondata.self.com. And if you take a look, this is specific for pumpkins. And it talks about that it's got 9% protein in there. And protein are those amino acids which consist of nitrogen and phosphorus and carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. The sulfur, remember we just talked about those on the periodic table. Additionally, so it's also got the vitamins of uh, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, K, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, pantothenic acid, choline, and betaine. Um, and then minerals, calcium, calcium, we've already heard this again from the beginning, iron, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, um, zinc, copper, and manganese are all minerals or elements that plants need as well. With the vitamins that we discussed about, remember that a healthy organic garden has a lot of living things in the soil, including bacteria and fungus and earthworms and nematodes and all of these living things. So the vitamins and the minerals are important, not just for plant health, but also to the soil biology. So we just talked about the nutritional value of the pumpkin fruit, but how about the seeds? Check out this article here now from healthline.com. And this here talks about the top 11 science-based health benefits of pumpkin seeds. And here it says, full of valuable nutrients. If we turn the page here, we can see, again, the seeds have seven grams of protein, which again is a very important component for also getting nitrogen into the soil. Phosphorus, manganese, magnesium, iron, zinc, and copper. And doesn't it just make sense that the fruiting body, this pumpkin, and all the seeds are gonna carry the most valuable elements and the most valuable resources, more important than your cuttings, more important than all of the things you're putting in your compost pile. The fruits are gonna have a lot more macro and micronutrients, more so than anything else. So it just makes sense to recycle those pumpkins 
back into your property. Um, so let's get started with that on the other corner. Follow me. So here we are now under the base of one of our Eureka lemon trees. It's simply two years old and check out all of these lemons. When this was installed about two years ago, it only measured about three to four feet in height and now it's measuring about 12 to 15 feet and supporting close to 50 to 100 lemons. So it's doing very well. And we've accomplished this by feeding it three times a year with organic granular fertilizers being spring, summer, and fall. Those are your feeding times. Also starting um, to coat the tree trunk. This um, half of it's come off, half of it's still on there, but we're recoating it now with the primary goal of protecting it from winter rodents. So I'm gonna finish coating it um, after this video, and it's gonna be my whole next video is just discussing the importance of protecting your plants for late fall and winter against girdling rodents. We're talking about mice and rats and squirrels um, and all of these critters that had plenty of food come spring and summer, but through the fall and especially in winter, they're starving and they become extremely desperate for car carbohydrates and those sugars that underlie the bark and they'll start chewing on the bark to get to those sugars. And apparently it's a huge major issue at um, in, in the city of San Francisco and surrounding areas due to their rat problem. And here we are in Los Angeles, about a mile away from a lake. And I know there's a lot of rats that also live within this community. And they may be the culprit of what's girdling some of the trees in our backyard, which again, I'm gonna share with you in the next video. Let me quickly share with you the other products here which you can see. So this here is the Ivory Organics. We're using the color white right now, but it's also available in colors green and brown. But let me just quickly share the label with you here. It's Ivory Organics, protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. It's also registered material for use in organic agriculture. And over here, it quickly says, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces. It also comes with the seven natural organic oils. Let me share, share with you the oils that are in here castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and spearmint oil. So um, that's a little bit of background about the gold label. The blue label over here is um, simply protection against damaging summer sunburn and, win and winter sun scald. And over here, it has the active ingredients of garlic and cinnamon, but it doesn't talk about, as you can see with the gold label, the protection against the insects and the rodents, even though it has the added garlic and cinnamon, which will offer some protection. Also available in colors, white, brown, and green. And then there's also the ready to use spray. Um, we're gonna talk about this in just a minute, but let's get started with recycling pumpkins. I'm gonna show you how easy this is gonna be. We're simply gonna take a saw. I thought about bringing a, our best sharpest knife in the kitchen, but I'm like, what easier way than just getting a nice rough serrated saw such as this one. And we're just gonna cut it like so. We'll pull it apart. And here we got the two parts. If we simply recycled this entire pumpkin into the garden, we know come spring, we're gonna have a ton of pumpkins. So let's get these seeds out real quick. And that's the reason I brought this colander. So we'll simply remove the seeds like so. And now that you've basically got the flesh seed free, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut it into some more pieces, like so. It looks like a couple seeds were hidden right under here under my thumb. Get those out as well. And now we're just gonna keep cutting it into some cubes, like so. And now watch this, the fun part. We're simply gonna add the pumpkin rind in a circle around the base and underneath the canopy of the tree. You can actually put it either facing up or down, but my recommendation is take the soft side and position it facing down so as the snails and the slugs and the saw bugs and all of the other critters that underlie this layer of wood chips come out, they can quickly get to the soft part and quickly decay it, turning it back into manure recycling all of those elements back into the soil and, benef and benefiting the above structure plant, whether it be a lemon tree, and as we said at the beginning, it could be your roses, it could be any ornamental bush. Um, in addition to your vegetable garden, if you know where you're gonna be planting, you can be applying the same concept. Check out this rotting pumpkin over here. 
So this here got damaged not too long ago. And you can see that it's has all of these holes, all these flies are coming out of it. Take a look at the base. All of the slugs have been coming in and out of it. And if you come in a little closer, check out the base over here. You might even see some of these pests. I'm hoping you can capture all of these saw bugs. Can you get, get that right there? See right where my finger is right here? See all these saw bugs right there? They're crawling around there, they're moving around. Whole bunch of them. Now, let's check out what happens at night. You're gonna love this one. So here we are now, it's just shortly after 9 p.m. in the evening. Got my pumpkins here behind me. Let me show you the activity that's happening on this particular pumpkin here behind me. Let me show you here. Check this out. I've got an assistant here flashing the light, but hopefully you can see all of these slugs. Take a look at how large they are. But it's not just slugs, let's take a look. You can see how it's completely rotting out the bottom. And there's some roly polies. Hopefully you can see the activity right there. It's a little bit too bright. Anyways, we'll revisit this in the day and we'll see how much life we can identify in the afternoon. But tons of activity in the evening. It kind of looks like leeches but it's really busy getting consumed and turning into manure that will ultimately benefit the garden. And I'll teach you how. Check out this slug over here. Look at how large it is. If I put my finger next to it, you can see it's almost the length of my finger compared to these other ones that are about the size of my thumb or fingernail. See that? Those are tiny. This guy here is huge. So here we are, we just gutted all of these pumpkins if you wanna check it out. Take a look at all the pumpkins that we've hollowed out. Take a look at the bee over here on the woolly blue curls. Hopefully you can capture that. And then take a look at all the seeds that we got. And then just next to the seed, we got all these cubed pieces that'll be going into the rest of the garden. What we're gonna do here now is we're simply gonna take the seeds we're gonna put them in the blender. All of those elements and, um, and nutrients and amino acids and all of this good stuff that, anyways, we're gonna put these in the blender now, like so. And now let's come to the backyard and I'm gonna show you what the next step is, follow me. So here we are now um, in the backyard just between my semi-dwarf Eureka lemon tree and then my standard Meyer lemon trees. And here we just got back with our container of pumpkin seeds take a look here this is our blender and what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna put it on top like that and we'll add some water to help with the blending process and then if you want to come a little closer you can check this out secure the lid in place and here we go Pick up the speed of blending it. I'm just gonna add some more water. It's a little bit too thick. The whole goal with this process is just to break down every single one of these seeds. The goal is once it's cut, it's not gonna germinate, and then all of those vitamins and minerals will benefit the earth. So here we go again. And there we go. Check this out. You can see we've got this liquid now, which we can use to basically enrich the earth all around the plants. Follow me. So here we are now back at the base of the Meyer lemon. You can see that I've got all of these little squares, cubes, situated around each of the lemon trees along the way. You can see I can take a wedge as large as this, which we're gonna use for our larger plants, or we can make this look a lot better by making these little small cubes and just positioning them around the root zone, away from the tree trunk, and we're just basically giving it an opportunity to break down and enrich the soil in that area. We can also do the same thing with our 
pumpkin seed puree as well and just basically feed the topsoil like so. If you're coming a little closer, I want you to come all the way in. If you can take a look what we've done. So we've now got the pumpkin rind, we've got pumpkin seeds, we've got some leaves from pruning the lemons um, just a couple of months ago. And then there's some wood chips also underneath that. If you come in a little closer, you can see here, we've also got some, some wood bark as well. And all of that is offering insulation, which is doing a couple of things. And let me explain to you now. By doing all of these layers, first, the wood chips are insulating the soil we just mentioned. By one, in the summertime, it's keeping the plant cooler. In the wintertime, it's keeping the plant warmer. Also, as the wood chips break down, that's feeding also all the soil organisms just as these pumpkin rinds are also gonna feed the organisms, as the pumpkin seeds are gonna feed the organisms that break down into the elements that are ultimately gonna support the plant and create a lot more flowers and fruit and healthy plants and trees within your garden. Um, and that's basically what we've got going on. In regards to pruning your plants, my favorite time for pruning, now that I mentioned it, when it comes to your citrus is right after your citrus harvest. However, if you wanna take a quick look along the side, we just did is a, what's called an espalier, uh, like a freestanding espalier, which means we've kind of created like a hedge using our lemons, but we didn't use our loppers. Check out all of those fruits. And you can see that they're all growing in a very tight, compact fashion with a lot of fruit. Let me share a couple other fruit trees in our garden as well. Follow me. So here we are under another one of my favorite plants is the ice cream banana plant. Check out all of those fruit up there. So as you can see, I already started putting a couple of um, pieces of the pumpkin flesh around the base of the plant. Back in May when we harvested the last banana um, bunch off of this ice cream banana plant, also known as the blue java, we recycled the entire parent plant, which is this year, the parent plant is this stalk over here. If I can get this leaf out of the way, it's this stalk over here that supports that bunch of bananas. Once we harvest the banana, the entire parent plant comes out, and then the sucker, which is one of these, will take its place. We've got two suckers on, on my left. One of them will come out, probably the smaller one, and we'll, we'll donate that to a friend or family. And then this will take its place, and there's another one behind it as well. So there's two suckers, which will give me two chances of fruit for the next and the following year. But the entire parent plant will get recycled right back at the base, and there's still some remnants of that, if I can show you, if you want to come in through that pocket, you can see here some remnants of the original parent plant, which is this tree trunk right in here, and then all of the leaves that are underneath it. So what we're going to do here now is we're just going to take the flesh of the pumpkin, we're just putting that around the base of the plant, and then these are the seeds and we can simply create a nice ring around the plant, like so. And all of that will get watered down and break down. So over here is a um, Oral Blanco grapefruit. Got my bear's lime tree over here. If you wanna just get a little closer, you can see over here I've got a really established Fuerte avocado tree, and behind that, the Haas avocado tree. But between each of the trees, I've got these organic piles of clippings, and these include the clippings taken from our, as you can see here with the leaves, our passion fruit vine. Over here, it looks like there was like a beet that just got too mature, it wasn't um, soft enough or edible enough you know, to eat. And over here, I can find some remnants of, this is the bottom part of the banana, the fruitless part of the banana flower that is breaking down. You can see it's covered in white and all of that is mold that's also happening within the garden, which is extremely beneficial to the life and the health of the plants within the garden. But we can also simply take the rinds and put them right there on the piles as well. And this will naturally break down with all of the biology that exists here in the garden. And again, we're talking about the saw bugs and the slugs and the snails and the earthworms and everything else will come and break this stuff down, returning all these elements to the surrounding trees and give you a ton of fruit to for years to come. We can also do the same thing with this pumpkin puree and we can just dump that right on top of the pile. And as it rains and as we water within the garden, these elements will slowly work their way back into the soil and enrich your soil in better ways than any chemical fertilizer. Let's continue. So we just talked about using the blender 
to basically break down the seeds to prevent them from germinating. The more traditional way, and let me share with you over here, if your goal was with the seeds, which I've got a few left, if your goal was to plant some next spring, it's recommended that you basically leave them out in a dry, dark, and cool place over winter and then sow them after your last chance of frost has passed and then you can have some pumpkins for planting. But what most growers will do is they're gonna go put it in their compost pile. Follow me and check this out. So here we are now in the furthest corner of the backyard and here I've got my compost bin. We've got a very small property so I don't have that much room for recycling. As you can see, I do most of my piles between the trees, but I put my surplus leaves and other clippings and even food scraps in here. And when I talk about food scraps, I'm talking about vegetable waste and not any meats or proteins going into here. So what we can do next, and let me see if I can take a handful out of here and show you what's going on. If we take a look here, you can see there's quite a bit of life. Right there is an earthworm. I don't know if you can see that right there off of my fingers. Now they're starting to crawl. But more importantly than the worms, and you can see how this is breaking down, there's still some sticks and stems in here that haven't quite broken down. Here's some more worms over here. But what's more important than the worms is the beneficial bacteria and fungus that are, that are in here. We're talking about instead of the handful of worms that are in this handful, we're talking about millions and billions of microorganisms that are living in here and creating a living organic soil when you bring this into your um, organic garden. So the two things we can do, and I've got these two halves, one that's been cleaned out and this one here with the seeds. I know that my compost bin over here is too small to create the heat that would generally be created by a healthy compost pile. So if I were to throw this in, the chances are it may germinate. And even if it did, if I toss it and tumble it, eventually it'll recycle even those seedlings back into the elements, which will ultimately benefit the soil. So I'm gonna teach you next how we're gonna take these seeds also, aside from blending it, there's another method that we can safely bring these seeds back into your garden without the risk of germination. In the meantime, I'm gonna to toss this back in here to feed all the living organisms that are in there. And let me share with you one other tip, follow me. So the other thing you can do is simply take a Ziploc bag. We're gonna open that here like so and we can remove the seeds and put those in here like that. You can add a little bit of water. Keep in mind, we said at the beginning that if your goal is germination, you're gonna put in a cool and dark and dry place. By adding water, these seeds are gonna to begin to rot. Once they rot, no chance of germination. You can see over here, this has got a little bit of pulp and seeds that I started about a couple weeks ago. You can see these seeds are dying. No chance of germination. I'll leave it for about another week and then I can throw this rotting seed mess around my trees the same way I'm doing over here. And again, that'll just enrich the soil with more bacteria, more beneficial fungus, um, and just a lot more elements and nutrients to result in your best growing season ever. Share your results with us and we'll follow you on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by simply writing hashtag IV Organic or IV Organics in the plural. So singular or plural, and I'd love to see what you're doing on, in your gardens around the world. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. So for those of you that have not thrown out your Halloween and Thanksgiving pumpkins, you now know how to recycle them back into your garden for maximum fruit, maximum vegetable, and maximum plant health in general by following these steps. Just to repeat again, you can cube them around your plants, you can put them in compost piles between your trees as well, and the other thing that we did, we blended the seeds to prevent them from germinating. You can also blend the entire pumpkin. We've also done a, a video about fish as well. And it was actually one of our YouTube subscribers that talked about blending fish as well to prevent predators um, and scavengers within your community from digging them up. We talked about burying fish around your trees and returning those elements back into your plants. So um, just the benefit of using a blender within your garden is just limitless and um, I'll even include another video where we talked about eggshell puree as well and did a video using the blender as well 
for your garden as well. And all of those links will be at the end of this video as well as in the comments down below. So be sure to check those out. So if you've enjoyed this educational moment brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up and most importantly by subscribing down below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational gardening videos. And also don't forget to hit that push bell notification to get informed as soon as a new educational video is released. Again, thanks for watching and wishing you all happy gardening.